Hello everybody, it's April 25th, 2014. Been a while since I've made a video, probably a couple months. Uh, a lot of times I try to forget the whole ordeal of what happened to me. Uh, it's pretty impossible though with the uh, spasm that I have, it's a constant reminder. I feel the need to recap in case anyone out there is watching me for the first time. Uh, in April of 2011, you know, a lot of times I, it's hard to go back because I'm trying to forget who I was and I'm trying to forget my old life. Uh, so, recapping it is difficult but I feel like I have to to recap each time because I never know who's out there watching for the first time. In April of 2011 I was walking my mom's dog and uh, being bad and letting her off the leash which I wasn't supposed to do running around playing with her in this somebody else's yard so I'm also trespassing it was an abandoned house you know that they were trying to sell the property for uh, unfortunately it was sort of in a country half country area of Virginia and there was a friendly Mr. Deer who liked to roam that field and deposit, of course, what I now hate. Uh, I don't, of course, I'm now not very fond of deer. But deposits deer ticks along the tall grass as, as, as I was playing with the dog and leaning over. A tick jumped into my shirt, unbeknownst to me. And uh, so I had no idea. A day or two later I was in the shower and I remember feeling something on my chest and thinking it was just like a pimple or a bump or a cut or something. Uh, which of course I rue to the maximum degree at this point. Uh, but it was a tick. It, the tick was super small when it jumped on. Uh, super small. And the tick process is it gets in, it attaches, it starts to drill a hole or suck your blood or whatever, and it transfers the uh, bacterial DNA, which enters some kind of adaptive state to adapt to your body, you know, the host or whatever. So anyways, during this whole time, the tick is sucking my blood and growing bigger. And so I finally noticed a couple days later on my chest and it had lodged itself and I had to just kind of yank it off which probably made things worse that's not the proper way to take a tick off but, uh, at this point it may have been too late but I didn't do anything about it my mom said something about Lyme disease and I remember googling it and just briefly looking over it and not really taking it seriously uh, I thought it was like any other disease it could just be cured if you had it, so you only had to worry about it if you had it. I didn't do anything preventative. Uh, so over the course of the next couple months, I started not feeling so good, you know, feeling uh, tired and uh, irritable. My digestion, my stomach would start to make noises when I ate, which never happened before. Uh, and I eventually started getting more and more constipated. Uh, started getting pain. Uh, uh, my stool started getting. I noticed that my stool was really weird. It was really like light colored, like it was practically white. So I went to the doctor and gave him a stool sample, and they said, "Oh, everything's fine." And then I finally said, "Well, I'd also got bit by a tick." I mentioned that. So they gave me a course of doxycycline. 
which is the standard thing they get for Lyme disease. This is, was two months after the bite, uh, and I went on the course, felt a little better. I still would feel tired. I would feel so tired at work that I would have to go to my car and, and take naps, you know, during lunch. Uh, and I thought that it was over, you know, because I was able to go to the bathroom a little better. I started eating bad again and then my side started hurting and I started feeling even more constipated and at one point after I ate a bunch of Little Caesars at my mom's I was having trouble breathing I just breathing in it was like causing like chest pain so I went to the ER and they gave me some Prilosec said you got heartburn see you later buddy of course I wish I would never gone back because the next day uh, the same thing happened. I had pain in my lower left side. Well, this time, they got me. They said, well, we misdiagnosed it last time. No stool sample. No sample. Urine sample. They said, you have blood in your urine. Well, trace amounts of blood in your urine is actually normal, according to my mom, who was a nurse. Not that that means anything. Uh, but... They said, you, you either have kidney stones or you have diverticulitis. And they prescribed me what is basically poison. Okay? And it goes by the name of Cipro. Cipro flow. I don't know the full name. Cipro. It's a fluoroquinolone class antibiotic. And what it does is, this is how it supposedly works, is it destroys DNA. RNA, I think. Or DNA, RNA. What's the difference? It's the only antibiotic that does that. So... I went home, I took a pill, thinking I was invincible. I didn't like the doctor, I remember that. I didn't like the doctor at the ER. I didn't like him. I didn't trust him. But of course, me being the trusting fool, I was like, okay, give me the pills. The medicine, that's what they call it. Not medicine. They don't call it antibiotics, they call it medicine. It makes it sound nicer. So they gave me 750 milligrams Cipro maximum dose, a dose they never even used to have, two times a day, 500 milligrams, I mean it was 250, of Flagyl, another hard-hitting antibiotic. And basically, I got home, I took the pill, I woke up feeling crazy and panicked, my forearms were burning, I called my mom, I said, I don't want to take it anymore. She said, finish your antibiotics. So I kept taking the sipper. I kept being constipated and feeling worse and worse and more and more pain in my lower left side. And I think that going to the bathroom is your body's natural way of detoxifying. Okay, so when you can't go to the bathroom, your body becomes more and more toxic. When you add to that antibiotics, which are already toxic, you know, that's how they work. They're, they're toxic. They go in there and they kill stuff, but they're still toxic. Especially the fluoroquinolones. My body reached an extremely toxic state. I felt like a vampire. The sunlight hurt me. I felt like I was in like a, a weird dream state. I was scared. I was crying. I was screaming, to, you know, praying to God, crying to God to help me. Uh, I got in so much pain that I went back to a gastroenterologist and told him about it, and you know what he told me? He said, oh, you keep taking your sip, bro. He wasn't even paying attention to me. He was looking at his laptop the whole time. Just keep taking it. And if you're still in pain, he had no idea the pain I was in. I could barely walk. You know, It hurt just to walk. Just keep taking it. I went home. And that's when I got even worse. I started, I had gotten heart palpitations. I called the hospital. They said, this is what they said. I'm not making this up. They said, that's just the medicine working. That's what they told me. 
I told him at heart. This isn't even a doctor. This is just a nurse or helper, whatever, whatever she was. That's just the medicine working. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know. You know, I just I was like, okay. And at that point, I felt like I couldn't sleep. You know, it was like this weird state where every time I would try to start to fall asleep, I would like jerk up and uh, it developed a very bizarre headache back here. A headache that like, I've never had before. Very bizarre. Like a deep pain. And I started to hear something in my ear. I started to hear like this vibration, like this twitching. Like something's twitching. I'm like, oh, I got a twitch on my leg or something? I thought it was on my leg. I didn't know where it was. I didn't feel anything on my leg. But something was twitching. And at first, when it first started, okay, this is this is what this stuff does to you. Okay, it does things nothing in nature could do to you. Okay, like a like a nuclear bomb blast, you know, nearby. That's the type of stuff that it does to you. It creates this toxicity where it attacks, you know, your your central nervous system gets attacked. Okay, I couldn't find it. There's no twitch on my leg. I started just, it, and then all of a sudden I realized it was internal. It was like, you know, inside, you know, somewhere you know, up, up my anus. That's where it was. It was twitching. And it just, I said, whoa. I knew that something was wrong. And that's when I Googled Cipro. And that's when I read the horror stories on askapatient.com when you punch in Cipro. All these people, like, oh my god. Now look what this did to these people. And I, that's when I read the article that talked about peripheral nervous system, central nervous system damage from Cipro by Dr. Cohen. I think he's uh, at San Diego State. And I realized it's, it's just a, a horrible realization when you come to the point when you know that something is something really anti-nature wrong with me right now like this constant I guess it's similar to people who you know I've, I've talked to that all of a sudden their brain feels like it's on fire or they develop just tinnitus all of a sudden you know it's not as uncommon as you think so basically I, I don't have time to tell you you know day to day what happened but It's been two and a half years, and for the first year and a half, maybe the first year, I was in hell. You know, hell on earth. The mental, the stress level that I endured and the mental torment, the life destruction that occurred was, I lost everything. I lost my job, I lost all my money, I lost my cars because of this constant fatigue I felt, this constant drain and this bizarre spasm that was inside my body that never stopped. Do you understand? Never stopped. Like this. Inside your body. Never stopped. I mean, as far as I'm conscious. Maybe it stops when I'm asleep, but as the second I wake up, and right before I go to sleep, it's always going. And it drove me nuts. Along with the chemical destruction that occurred inside my head, I felt like fucking killing myself every single day. I felt like killing myself. I saw the potential that I had and what had happened because of the Cipro and because of the Lyme disease and the nightmare I was going through not knowing what was wrong with me. Going, I mean, I went to Arizona. I went to Florida. I went... You know, live with my sister, live with my mom, just not knowing what was going on, thinking I was going to die almost every single day, going to three different mental wards, trying to kill myself twice. And I want to live. I was always a person that was afraid of death. So you know, I never tried to kill myself before. You know, you know 
Do you know, I wasn't, this wasn't in my head. This was some serious destruction that was going on in my brain, in my body. You know? Feeling like you can barely walk, feeling like you've got a night's sleep, but you just, you, you got no energy. You know, I've had, you know, I have, I can have pain in the back of my knee, I have a grindy shoulder, I have popping hips, and I'm only 37. I was in perfect physical shape before I took these pills. Granted, Lyme disease is probably compounding the problem, but there's no way in hell I'm worse off not taking the Cipro. There's no way in hell. You know. And I can't, you, you know, it's so hard to classify. You know, so I can't, I can try to sue, but what do you classify it under? Oh, I'm tired all the time. Oh, I have achy, you know, joints and, and uh, you know, I have pain in my head and sometimes and, and yeah, I'm like maybe really low grade tinnitus. Uh, you know, I have little floaters in my eyes sometimes. It looks like little worms, you know, especially in the sunlight, little worms, you know, streaking across your eyes. I had perfect eyesight before. How do you classify any of that? You know, it's just like, they'll just be like, well, you can't really sue for that. You know, I want to sue, you know, you know. Don't get me wrong. You know. But, uh, you know, pain in my neck, pain in my back. You know, it's sporadic, but it never leaves. You know, it's never like, oh, this is gone. It'll come back, you know, a week, a month later. You know, and, and it's all from the zipper. Uh, like I said, the worst part is the twitch that never stops some kind of nerve damage or something. I don't know if it was down there in my pelvic floor or in some strand of my brain or whatever. But there's something in there that never stops. It drives me nuts. You know, when, I'm, when I lay down and go to sleep and you're supposed to be relaxed, it's always going. You know, it just drives me nuts. And I, and I don't think it's just that. I think it interferes with my, the proper functioning of my body. You know, to for that nerve needs to be relaxed in order for my colon to to you know push the maximum amount of digested food out. That's just my theory. You know, I mean, but I, I just I wanted to recap. You know, I I can't. It's hard to make these videos because. Every time I make them, I mean, my whole point of making them is to make people aware of what Cipro did to me. You can watch through my other videos and you can see, I thought it was Lyme disease for the, you know, you can see the crap that I did. You know, I went out to Arizona and I thought it was this and that and I met this person and I left them and I regretted it and I felt like killing myself over this and killing myself over this. And, uh, I can't, you know... I can't be that person. I can't remember that stuff. I can't think about anything in my old life because it's all impossible now, especially with Lyme disease because the truth about Lyme disease, you know, Lyme disease is bad enough as is, you know, without all the Cipro, you know, BS that happened to me. But Lyme disease, basically with Lyme disease, If it's active, I mean, I, I, I don't know, I'm not an expert, but I've, I've read from experts that it's in your saliva. You know, you can have it in your saliva and it's in your semen. So basically, I cannot have, I can't even French kiss a chick. You know, I'd be afraid to even kiss her on the lips. And so, you know, before all this happened, you know, I was a virgin. I'll tell you. I still am. And it's very, like, your basic man's, like, basic desire is to have sex. Not just have sex, but to have a mate and to fall in love and to have a family, you know. To have the phys physicality of the world, of, of, of a female denied to you, when that's your basic chemical desire, uh, is automatically depressing, you know, anytime I go out and I see a girl or a woman in it and I can't do anything with her, you know, I can hug her, you know, shake hands, but that's it. Maybe like I could get a hand job or something, you know, I could, you know, use my hands and stuff, but what is that? You know, 
So it's like it's a compounding factor of Lyme disease and what the Cipro has done. I would be, you know, praising to God if if this twitch would go away. I'd be like, okay, I can just live with Lyme disease. But both of them is very difficult to to live with. It's very difficult to live with that. You know, it's like I almost have to forget the past, and I have to forget about sex. You know, I can't think about sex. I can't think about. I have to. It's automatic, you know, when you look at a woman, you have that sexual desire, but I can't act on it you know, in good conscience, you know, without saying, hey, I'm going to give you a disease if I have sex with you. You know, I could use a condom, but, you know, it's still, you got to let the person know, but it's just like, that's beside the point, you know, you, I mean, it, it's, it's, that's not beside the point, but I want to get healthy also, you know, and, and, and these weird things that pop up, uh, all the time is very discouraging, you know. Uh, I, recently, in the past three or four days, I've been having this pain in the back of my head, like inside, like almost like when your when your heartbeat pulses, it's like a pulsating, you know, pain every once in a while. It's kind of scary, but there's a, there's a, there's a small part of me that's just like, you know, it, it just it almost wants a quick death, you know, that, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I want to do it, but I really think about it a lot, especially when I'm in pain, you know, as any normal person would, you know, so, that's my update, you know, I don't know if that angle is better, that other angle, this angle is better. Sorry. There you go. That angle is better. I guess that angle is better. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, I mean my basic message is don't take Cipro. Ruin my life. You know, I'm trying to develop a new life here, but I keep getting all these physical reminders, all these pains and stuff. You know, I do know that I've been bad, you know, with sugar. I've been eating some sugar lately, and maybe that's why I'm getting this headache. But, uh, you know, I guess, you know, part of my YouTube, the reason I do YouTubes is because. It helps a little bit to express yourself, you know, to just express your thoughts and how you're feeling, and, you know, because at least it's out there, you know, at least you shared it with someone and maybe someone can relate, you know. Uh, but uh, it's, it's funny, you know, like, it's just funny, you know, because the mental wards they're just drug pushers. That's all they do with the mental wards. They do little silly activities and they push drugs. Every night they push drugs. Here's your drugs. Here's these drugs. And like I said in the last video, basically drugs, synthetic drugs, are poison. They're poison to varying degrees. That's what they, you know, that's what the pharmaceutical companies do. They sell you poison and they sell you the cure for the poison. But the cure for the poison is actually just poison. You know? So then you're even more poisoned. Maybe some short-term benefit. But you're poisoned. You know, so you come back with something else and they say, well, here's some more poison. And that helps a little bit for this other thing. But this other thing is back. But now this other thing comes back. Well, we got a new drug here. Why don't you try this? Well, that's just another form of poison, you know. So now you're on three or four different types of poison, and you just keep racking them up, and eventually something goes wrong, and you go to the hospital, and then they give you some serious poison, like some fluoroquinolone antibiotics, where they say, well, you have a tumor, you have cancer. You know, so we have to give you chemotherapy. 
And then to make sure you don't get an infection, we gotta give you some Cipro. We gotta give you some Leviquin, give you some Avalox. And that way, when you die from the, from the fluoroquinol antibiotics, they can say, well, he had cancer. And everybody can say, oh, cancer, you know, I'm scared of cancer. They put that fear out there. You know, they, oh, cancer, you know, you gotta use those powerful drugs. But it's all bullshit. It's all profit. It's all blood money. You can cure cancer with fucking a good diet and, and exercise. You know, strict diet. You know? A shitload of garlic or something. Because your body is what eventually... It's not the drugs. Your body has to eventually clean out the shit. The drugs, the antibiotics can help but eventually, your body has to fix it, you know? The drugs just kill, but your body has to fix it. So, what makes the drugs any better than what your body can do? Or what, what stuff from nature can do? You know, natural stuff that's been around for millions of years, not stuff that was just developed in a lab to make money. I mean, that's the motivation, is, is to make money. I mean, that's probably what AIDS is. I mean, think about it, you know. The AIDS just came around in what, like the 80s? 70s? Late 70s, 80s? Where do you think that came from? Do you think all these millions of years on planet Earth, nobody had AIDS? And then all of a sudden in the 1980s, it was like, oh, boom, AIDS is around. You know, think about it. It was man-made. It was man-made because you get enormous amounts of money from introducing diseases into the population and having the cure, which is actually just a slow death. You know, a, a gimmick, but actually a slow death. I mean, that's the world we live in. You know, that's what fluoroquinolone and antibiotics are. They're fucking poison. Their Russian roulette might work on some people, cripple and ruin and even kill other people. You know, do you want to take that risk? You, know, you might think I'm a nut job, but trust me. You know, Think about what the warning label says. It do, I mean, this is a fact. It says may cause tendon rupture. might cause tendon rupture. Would you want to take something that could do that? And why, why would you think that it would just do one tendon? Like it's just going to do your Achilles or it's just going to do your tricep or your tendons in your arm or something. It's system wide. Your whole, you know, your whole body is being attacked. It's a fact. It penetrates the blood brain barrier. Do you want to take something that penetrates into your brain for an infection that a supposed infection, which I never even had. I was just constipated. That's all I was, was constipated. Once I had an enema and went to the bathroom, I felt much better. That's all it was, I was constipated. By, by that time, you know, the damage was already done. My, my nervous system had already been jacked up. and I have to live with this twitch for the rest of my life. But why well, take the risk of taking something that penetrates into your brain with fluoride in it, which is a known poison? Fluoride is a known poison. Produced by a company that ran the concentration camps. Bayer. They ran the concentration camps. That fucking gassed millions of people. You know, all, all the little Advil ads you see, it's run by concentration camp people. That's the same thing with Advil. Advil is poison. Any synthetic pill is poison to some, you know, to some degree. Anyways. That's my update. I've been, you know, trying to distract myself from this nightmare, from this reality, by playing a lot of poker, which I had actually made 10000 I was up to 10000 I made $10,000 playing poker, and I uh, dropped back down to five, going, you know, getting crazy and stuff. People see me, man, they don't know.
they don't know the real story. They don't know that I can never really have sex. And they don't know that I have a constant spasm inside my body. And they don't know how wrecked my body is and how probably degrading my, my GI system is. So have a good weekend, everyone.